Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, today, we are showcasing our newest campaign on the Spark site, and that, of course, is Locker. Uh, but before I introduce you to Ross, uh, I'd quite like to quickly uh, mention a campaign that we just did last quarter. And that was, of course, the med device uh, company called Origin, um, which went onto the site uh, you know, just a short while ago. We raised one and a half million for the company in just 21 days uh, from over 270 investors. Just demonstrates uh, that the, the crowd's ability to raise significant funds is in a very short time frame. So thanks to all of those investors and, and many of whom uh, are uh, on the platform, on the call today. So, uh, so thank you very much for your support in that, uh, in that campaign. Uh, we also have a solid pipeline of new campaign and new companies coming onto the platform uh, in the coming days and weeks. We've uh, a business. Uh, we've we have businesses in tech to, in in sectors such as uh, aircraft tech, uh, document security, food tech, med tech. Uh, so the, all these are coming onto the platform uh, in the very near future. So please listen out to those. Listen out for those, and uh, please join us for the uh, future webinars about those companies as well. But on to today's business. Um, Locker is uh, on the platform right at the moment, and it's an app that personalizes the world's best sports content from over 2,000 publishers to create the world's most powerful one-stop sports application. It's already raised one and a half million euros, uh, and this has come from leading VC investors such as Dapper Labs, Techstars, and Stadia Ventures. It's the second largest uh, index of sports contacts in the world, next to Google, uh, and the app has, uh, analyzes over 5,000 sports articles per day across 18 different sports. Uh, the version three of the app will be out very soon, and that will include video and, org, uh, and audio aggregation as well. The company has reached, already reached over 780,000 of investment in this round, 79% of its 1 million target on, on, the app, uh, on the platform. The company is uh, EAAS qualifying, meaning that investments qualify for a 40% tax rebate from the government through the revenue commissioners as an incentive for you to invest into young Irish businesses. I'd now like to introduce you to Ross, uh, uh, CEO of Locker. So Ross, please turn on your camera. Ross is a veteran of the sports media space, having co-founded two successful startups in the past, both Pundit Arena and One Zero. And Ross has a BCom from UCC, going back a few years, back into 20, 20, 2013 now, I think. So Ross, you're very welcome. Thanks, Chris. Good to, good to, good to be on. Uh, yeah, the, the BCom is, uh, geez, that's going back now 10, 10 years, I think. So um, getting it's more recent. 30... It's more recent than mine, that's for sure. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> anyway, Ross, listen, uh, good to see you. Perhaps you could uh, start your uh, presentation and we'll get, uh, get going. For anybody who wants sure. to ask a question, please do so and do it through the Q&A button, not the, not the uh, chat function, do it through the Q&A function and we'll uh, be able to track that a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, seamlessly. So, uh, so Ross, over to you and uh, we'll see you on the other side of the presentation for the Q&A. Perfect, thanks. Um, hey everybody, yeah, my name is Ross Adore, our CEO and co-founder of Locker. You know, at Locker, as you can see, what we actually do is we personalize all your sports content in one app. So I guess from our perspective, it all certainly starts with the team. Um, since I left college, I've been working in the sports industry. I've worked across publishing, uh, digital conferencing, online conferencing, and offline. Um, founded two companies in that space. Wayne Muller, CTO of um, Locker. Wayne actually founded Jock Market, which is essentially like uh, you can trade players as stock. Um, would have an extensive background in sport, worked with the New England Patriots beforehand, and is definitely one of the best B2C digital sports PTOs, I think, globally. Um, and Matt Stearman. Uh, Matt has a strong commercial record in sport. He's worked for various publishers and also there's still media on proven commercial strategies. So it certainly starts with the team just thinking about actually the problem sports fans have today. And that problem is really simple. Uh, if you look at sports consumption, it's very fragmented. So anybody on the call, you go to different apps for publishers, rights holders, league, social, betting platforms, you name it. And you go on this fragmented journey multiple times a day. Whereas if you look at an industry like music, music, you don't do this, right? You just go straight to Spotify. And the challenge with that journey is that no one actually understands who you are as the fans. So what we call that is fan DNA. She might have someone that's not a big golf fan, but when Tiger plays, they're in. They went to college in Miami, so they followed the Dolphins, but they're from Cork, so they have a monster follower. And they follow the Lakers in basketball because they're a Kobe fan, and they're a Kobe fan, and they're LeBron. 
So no one actually understands who you are from that journey. And that's the biggest challenge. The solution from our perspective is super simple. That's what we found at Locker. So when you join Locker, you just tell us the sports that you like, different teams, different leagues, different entities that you've got an interest in, and also your favorite athletes. What we do from there is you can also tell us some of the publishers or content creators you've got a preference for is we centralize all that in one place. And what that results in is you've got it split out by different sports teams and leagues from over 2,000 sources from across the globe, all in one place. I would say long-term wise, uh, anybody that's on the app right now, it's, it's obviously got a huge index of written content, but sports fans can only actually do six things. So they can read content, look at stats and scores, listen to content, watch, watch live, and are back. So it's important to remember we're actually not a producer of any of this content in any capacity whatsoever. We just integrate the best providers of that in the world. And that's where the business model kicks in. So you've got a content marketplace and you've got the odds checker integration, what we call our bet integration. When it comes to actually the marketplace, when you're in sport, you never want to miss the best moments. So what you follow in Locker will actually notify you of. So say Rory and Scheffler the other night, will notify you that those both matches have gone to a tie. And then you can actually log in and watch. If you've got a sub, you can sign in or you can actually pay for your microtransaction to watch live. And that gives you a little bit of overview from the marketplaces. We integrate premium content, video, audio, written, and you can actually pay in micropayments or you can pay in a subscription to actually consume that content. And or if you already have a subscription, like say a lot of people have one to the athletic, you can just sign in seamlessly and consume it from there. When it comes to betting, over 80% of betting actually takes place in game. And that's why we actually built Locker Bet, which is a partnership with Odd Checker, which is the first time they've ever actually licensed that technology. So you can just sign into any book and you can get suggested bets from across all the different sports and teams and leagues that you follow. And then you can get trending bets by location. And or you can actually get bets from the best providers, but also the best odds. So if you're signed into the multiple providers, you can get the best odds and then place that bet importantly without leaving the application. And it's just on the betting side, side of it. Um, Oddshark is a very interesting platform if anyone has or hasn't used it. Um, this is the first time they have licensed it to a third party application. So we'll make Locker the first sports book in the world uh, and sports multi, multi sport app in the world that's actually able to use, use multiple books as well. And then the model on that is quite simple. In the US, there's user acquisition fees. Um, here at home, there's customer loss fees. So if you place a bet and it loses, and that's all done through the odd checker KPI. It's important to note that it's actually opt-in. So if you don't want to use it in any capacity, you don't have to, and it's opt-in only. Our competition, you, know, you could split this up into two sections, I would say. You could bleach report one football or buzzer. I think one football is probably the best comparison out there. It essentially does what this does just for soccer. A um, lot of funding got into it, over 443 million um, got into it. You've got Bleacher Report, which obviously is a publisher itself owned by Turner um, in the States. And they, when you use that application, you've got a choice over their content and others, but they generally preference their own. And then if you look at the other competitors like Apple News, Flipboard or News Now, which actually we used to use before we used Locker, um, you know, they're obviously not built for sports specifically. And also, they're not built to understand your fan DNA and just serve you in sport. And the middle part there is Locker logo, obviously. And from that perspective, we thought there's a really unique opportunity just to do sport um, and to aggregate and index sport and to be that form of escapism for a sports fan when they open Locker, they know where you just get sport. I would say the difference between Locker and, and some of those competitors is that we understand everything about you as a fan. So every action you do and don't take on the app is tracked. So let's say, for example, I'm not a massive NFL fan, but year on year, I'm growing a little bit, but come Super Bowl week, I'm in. So the app is actually able to understand my data and say, well, his preferences now, he doesn't follow NFL, but he starts to consume NMF, NFL content on that week. Vice versa, Manchester United, in my case, would be a regular consumption on a weekend and throughout the week. So it's actually understanding that fan better than anyone else it is the key lock is competitive success. Obviously, the space is heated up. You've seen the score being sold for $2 billion in the States, the Atletico for $550 million to the New York Times, Barcelona Sports being acquired by Penn, um, which also has scored the score. So Penn National is a gaming firm in the States. Fraction, you know, we, we've over 2,000 publishers indexed. Um, we actually have more that come into our system, um, but we actually think that those 2,000 publishers are best in class and best serve the fans' needs. The Odd Checker partnership, as I mentioned, will power all our betting engine for opt-in for users. We've got some leading rights holders already on board, such as BLPGA, and you've got a range of hosts of other uh, Major League Baseball teams like the Guardian, Opta, uh, 365, you name it. 
Also, we've got some brilliant investors. Uh, we got Techstar Sports. We're the first Irish company to ever do the Techstar Sports Accelerator. Daily Ventures, which is probably the US's most prominent sports firm and investor. Dapper Labs, which power all the blockchain for the NBA and their top shot. And uh, they're going into the Premier League, now going into the UFC, and also the NBA Pacers um, to their ownership group as well. We also just announced Rachel Blackmore. Um, Rachel actually is um, obviously is, needs no introduction, I'm sure, to many on the call. It's probably one of the best jockeys in the world. And Rachel's joined us as an ambassador. I think it's a really interesting step because we're actually able to allow athletes to then join Locker. She's got her own profile on Locker, so she's able to actually see during Cheltenham. I think she's topping Manchester United on the, particularly on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, um, as some of the most indexed things that are going on in Locker that day. So that's an exciting step forward for us for sure. As I mentioned, and Chris mentioned at the start, like we're actually indexing over 5,000 pieces of content a day now. We've a close partnership with Google. So we did their Adopt the Startup program. We work quite well with it. But when you look at that versus the Athletic, we actually top the Athletic on what they actually create each month. And so it's a huge gulf, of, uh, huge gulf in the difference of the two. Our go to market, obviously, the States is um, very much of interest. I think, uh, you know, America has seen a, a massive emergence of sports media and huge buyout to sports media in recent times. Our idea was really simple is that we thought we could test the idea in Ireland, um, test it very well, use it as an initial pilot market, and then export the product into the States. As you just went through, I think we've got enough backing from the States, and um, particularly in the state of Indiana and Ohio, where we can actually export the product into there. That's for context where the Indiana Paces are, where Techstars is based, Techstars Sports is based. So going across those two red states in Indiana and Ohio, and then across the blue ones into Illinois, Michigan. Pennsylvania and New Jersey, um, because the states are so big, obviously picking a targeted geographic market within it is key. Phase one, but in that as well, we we're looking at working with teams, leagues, and rights holders so they can actually use the app to understand fans, create content, transfer audience. And actually using that is really interesting because we actually had the idea come to us from a major league baseball team called Cleveland Guardians. We mentioned to us that they actually wanted to create their own profile on the app back in 2021. And from there, we actually realized that there was a huge opportunity to work with teams, leagues, and rights holders, which we're starting to do. So again, those two phases are spread out across those six, those six regions. Roadmap is pretty simple. For anyone that's on the app right now, you'll be able to see, obviously, a ton of written news aggregation and content aggregation. You'll be able to see some basic scoring. And now what we're about to do with V3 of our back end, um, so essentially we've done V1, V2, and now we're about to do V3. But what V3 does in a, in a nutshell, is it just allows for us to do a lot more dynamic content, to carry live video, to carry video, to create the marketplace content, to integrate Twitter, integrate deeper statistics. So for example, the top three uh, things I asked for on Locker are video, video live, Twitter integration, and deeper statistics. So we actually want to fulfill all those uh, things in 2023 with that upgrade. And you've got further enhancement of the marketplace. So, you know, items like Fanatics, where people are able to purchase shirts, jumpers, et cetera, from teams. That's definitely an integration we want to get there. We obviously feel like the marketplace and the content where we want to go first and then adding to that marketplace of product. And then last but not least, obviously the odds checker integration is then to follow. Opportunity, um, you know, we're looking to launch video, Twitter, fan DNA, develop live uh, marketplace, obviously raise, uh, raise the seed around at the end of it. Um, and that's pretty much, us as a nutshell, um, if I was to say, why well, you should invest in Locker, in my own opinion, it's uh, we've got a strong and experienced team. Um, you know, we've been backed by some of the top investors in the sports industry, which I think is important. We've got an exciting product. Um, for those of you that don't have the app, I'd encourage you to, to go and download it. We're proud of it. Um, use it. Give us some feedback on it. And I think that some of the indicators coming out that I were really delighted with. We've got some really good uh, global partnerships across the board as they've just gone through in this deck. And I think you know, overall, particularly in the States, it's become a highly active space for acquisitions. And um, you know, I think you've seen as I went through the score, the athletic, bastard sports all being sold. Um, you know, and that's a that's a trend, that's a macro trend of the industry going alongside the betting industry, but also others where they're actually acquiring companies in the space. So I think that's um there are probably five key bullet points for me. So that's the presentation. Thank you. Ross, thank you very much indeed. That was great. Uh, brilliantly uh, put across. And I think uh, that uh, one of the key jump out points to me is that fan DNA and the collation of all of that information that then feeds back into the uh, 
into the um, into the rest of the market. It, uh, it's, it's very uh, very compelling. Anyway, listen, uh, we thank you very much indeed. We've got uh, Fergal on the other line uh, on the line as well, and we've also got Matt. Matt is the chief commercial officer. Matt, are you there? Yeah, you are. Matt is the chief commercial officer for for Locker as well. So they will be answering your questions, and we've already got a good few of them already landed into the uh, into the into the Q and A box. So please add your questions there. And we will get to them uh, as we go through. Uh, but the first one, what milestones have you got coming up? You've kind of gone through a few of the ones there, I think, uh, Ross. But uh, yeah, you and you mentioned in the version three. But uh, someone's asked, what what master other milestones have you got coming up? Yeah, I would say definitely the version three is probably the biggest one, Chris. Um, that's actually just gone into testing this week, um, which is a really exciting one for us internally to be able to test out. I can see there's one question there on Twitter as well. Be able to test out Twitter, be able to test out live video, be able to test out some of some of the other interesting features we're building and actually test some of the fan DNA features. So I'd say that's probably one of the biggest milestones for the company this year. Um certainly. I'd say some of the some of the later milestones is bringing that on, bringing that into, into play for users in a prioritized manner. You know, so we've a lot of users feed back into us to say what they want, when they want it. So obviously executing on that roadmap. And I would say some of the later, some of the later um, milestones we're looking at is certainly expanding the reach of Locker outside of Ireland. I think that's really important. We've got a lot of users requested in the UK, so we've actually put it into the UK app stores just recently. So the next milestone is advancing into the UK, and then also progressing into the United States. I think that the um, the next round for Locker, bringing in strategic partners, and um, we've had a lot of interest in the business. We had an acquisition opportunity at the end of Q4 last year, which kind of opened our eyes to why people were strategically looking at the business. If I was to put it into three, I would say the technology and the front end product going outside of Ireland and then, um, you know, taking the taking the opportunity in the second half of this year to, to work with some strategic partners that have registered a strong interest in the business. Great, I have a question, a technical question here for you guys. Um, so what is the algorithm in your app and how does it tailor the experience for the user? So we, we have a range of proprietary algorithms written. Um, and what that does is that when you join Locker, you tell us the sports, the leagues, the teams, the players that you want to follow, as well as, you know, it's like, a, I often say it's like a golf club. You can go in and buy it off the shelf and you'll be able to hit it. But obviously, if you want to add customized publishers that you like, the BBC or the Athletic or whoever, they would actually then come out through your feed. But the more you actually use Locker, the more we actually build that point on you or a fan DNA or data point on you. So that's consistently evolving and changing. So that's, I would say, probably one of the largest pieces of proprietary piece of technology we built for it is um, that actual understanding of users and fan DNA. You know, I don't think that's something you see in a lot of applications, particularly in sport, that level of understanding of fans. And, um, you know, that's that's led to a lot of interest in the company. Very good. Um, how do you differentiate from other aggregation platforms like NewsNow? You mentioned those, obviously, in uh, NewsNow on the, uh, on the, in, the, in the presentation. How do you differentiate yourself? Uh, yeah, it's oh, sorry, not go on. You go for it. I get you. You take a take a drink of water there, Ross. You've been you've been talking a good while. I can jump in. I oh, appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think we kind of highlighted a few ways that we uh, differentiate both from a publisher side as well as an aggregator side. I think it's important again to mention that we are agnostic, which again makes us a little bit different from some of those others out there who are actually content creators and always putting their own content ahead of those partners within that. So you're not giving the true personalization of that because that's not necessarily what the fan wants. Furthermore, we treat all partners as content creators. So while other aggregators focus on traditional publishers, teams, leagues, and rights holders are publishers as well, creating their own content. And they have the same problems and desires that the traditional media houses do as well, which is to drive new revenue, to better understand fans, and find out ways they can grow either locally or globally within that. Uh, I think we have the free versus paid balance in there as well. So you have the option to purchase premium content as well as consume what's for free. And we put the partners first in this by not only being market agnostic, but sport agnostic and utilize that fan DNA piece to better serve our partners who are integrated within the platform to give them full transparency of what's happening within the app. I think a lot of other platforms, whether they're aggregators or uh, social platforms, aren't giving the true look and feel of actually what's happening within their platform without making them pay for it. We're not doing that with our partnerships within that. And, and, and just in terms of revenue and, and on that, what, what do you, or uh, what's the split of your revenue expectations between the kind of marketplace and subscriptions and the, the betting side of things? Sure. So when we set out to develop the app, uh, it was very much driven from a marketplace perspective. And 
for clarification, when we def define marketplace, we define that as a centralized world for premium sports content. So we utilize, again, the proprietary tech combined with the fan DNA and allow us within this marketplace to connect fans and publishers for a more seamless way for them to discover content that they love, be able to bundle that up and be able to buy and consume it all within the platform. So when we talk about marketplace, that could be buying a live sport or a pay-per-view event over the weekend. It could be buying a publication or a premium uh, uh, subscription to the likes of The Athletic. Uh, it could be anything from buying ticketing or merchandising from teams and leagues that you follow. Anything that matters to you as a sports fan that's in a paid for manner, we want to be able to connect fans more seamlessly to be able to do that and allow our partners to make sure that they can retain and monetize and use us as a marketing tool to do that. We're projecting roughly about 60, 65% of our revenue being driven through these partnerships. The balance of that is made up primarily of bets uh, and the partnerships that we have in that with a very small portion around advertising. So um, that's a little bit about how we see that split. But again, that split is coming from different partnerships that we have with teams, with leagues, with rights holders, with publishers, but locally and internationally to be able to integrate their content for us to connect fans to be able to purchase that content and for us taking a fee and a percentage only after we sell something. So again, another important differentiating factor, we don't charge our partners anything for marketing. We're a marketing and distribution tool on their behalf. It's up to us to find those fans based on what we know about them and give them the opportunity to purchase that content easily, only taking a fee once we sell something. Okay, great. I, I think Fergus as well, just uh, to acknowledge like the, the, the betting in the United States, obviously since the repeal of like federal law there, it is driving a lot of acquisition, a lot of interest on the sports media side. So like whether someone's preferences for betting or not, I think what you're seeing is you are seeing a kind of a emergence of the two industries where betting providers are, you're becoming more interested in media providers and obviously media providers are exiting the betting providers. So I, I don't expect that statistic um, to not continue to be a huge macro trend. And I think if you look at how Locker utilizes data, and potentially can at scale in the future, you know, that's that's definitely could could bring the bet exponential. But I think from our perspective, like we didn't found the company, it's not at the heartbeat of it to be, you know, from a bet perspective, it was something we got requested by users to integrate. And I think if we if we don't follow that, we're not following what the users are asking for. So it's not correct. Okay. Um just a, a comment someone has asked about but the pre-money valuation well it's this is a safe uh, investment uh, if anybody doesn't know what a safe investment is if you go onto one of our if you go into our investor blog there's a there's a, an item on there that will explain exactly what a safe is but this the the discount on the safe is 25 percent, and the cap is 10 million on the safe so that's uh, that, that that's the answer to the pre-money valuation. There was a question also. Uh, can you compare yourself to LiveScore and tell us what the difference is between the to the to the business, if you can, please, Ross? I'm smiling because uh, on Thursday morning I'm, I'm um, involved in the conference as a non-exec, and I, I'm actually interviewing the CEO of LiveScore, his friend Sam Sam Sadie. You know, LiveScore, I would say. Sam is a very similar viewpoint to, to Locker. I think he's come at it very differently. They're obviously um, a group of gambling execs that, that went and bought LiveScore out and that developed it into what it is today. It's very, very, very focused on the scoring side of things. Um, you know, and I think Sam is becoming a rights holder or a publisher by creating a lot of his own content. He's bought Champions League rights. And obviously that drives a, a huge cost with it. I think if you buy Champions League rights in any country or you're going to create content in any capacity. So I think, you know, the strategy of the two is, is quite different in that you have LiveScore, which is becoming a quasi-broadcaster publisher and is going to increase its spend in that capacity. Whereas at Locker, you know, Locker is not a publisher. It's a technology company and an aggregator and an index, and that's going to core to its operating beliefs. So I think they're very different in that sense. I do think Locker as it obviously increases its scoring capability. Um, in line with, I think live score is a gold standard in that. I think it's, it does a very good job of running scoring, but we see that, and I mean, this is no disrespect to, to live score Sam as, um, as something that we could we can actually bring in. So we buy that data in, we bring that data in and we display it. Whereas the more uniqueness about Locker is understanding you as a fan, being able to display what you want, when you want, and from who you want it. I think they're they're very two different two different entities and and that, like as I know Sam I know that they're go, we're going about it in two wholly uh, different ways which results in a you know massive difference in OPEX um, from our perspective maybe just add to it as well I think if we start creating content th then you can't be a true partner because as soon as you create something you can't be a true partner yeah 
Excellent. There are questions here on um, exits, valuations, and I'll just try and bundle them all into one. So can you give us an idea of some comparable exits in the sector or some late stage valuations? And obviously is the goal to, to build the business up um, to the level, you know, where, where you're looking for an acquisition in the next couple of years, or could you kind of flesh that out for us, you know, to the best of your ability, kind of yeah. future I, I, would say that, I would say that the, the biggest one was, was the score selling to Penn National. So for anyone who knows, the score was an application in North America and the US and Canada predominantly that sold for a little over $2 billion. Um, so it's a huge exit um, for them. You've got the New York Times, the Athletic, which sold for $550 million. You've got Barstool Sports, which is more of a predominantly social publisher um, that sold the Penn National, again, a gaming provider in the States for $525 million. So I'd say they're the probably latest three. Um, you know, you can look at one football raise. 300 million, um, like on a 1.2 billion dollar valuation, um, you know, in terms of a late spend. I think. So, uh, first of all, again, just to reiterate, we got a book, much like we're approaching content and remaining agnostic in terms of partnerships, we're doing the same on the betting side. Uh, there's enough great books out there. The average punter already has their books, uh, design kind of uh, infiltrated there. 80% of betters already appreciated with that. Uh, we're just trying to connect fans to more of what they want to do as a sports fan. And that's not us dictating that just to make money. That's the industry and the stats showing that. Uh, Ireland, I think, is fourth per capita in terms of spend on, on betting and sports on an annual basis. The PGA Tour just came out with a study from two weeks ago showing that 67% of bets being placed around the PGA tournament were in play. So the connectivity between what people are consuming in real time and also what they're doing in terms of their interest in betting cannot be ignored. So we're trying to create something that is a solution with that without, again, trying to be a book ourselves. So again, much like the content side of things, we're distribution and marketing and retention tool, trying to increase for the book, the number of bets that are placed and for the fan, a better, more seamless experience. Now, in principle, how it works is Locker Bet sits separate from Locker, the content. So it's purely opt-in from a user perspective. We don't advertise or promote anything from a betting perspective around anything around our content creators. It's simply an opportunity for those who are interested in to opt in and have it as part of their experience. When you log in, it's super easy. The KYC or know your customer is done at the point of at registration. So the book APIs and the partnership with odds checkers are doing all of that in terms of validation. And once you're in, you can pick the books much like you can pick content creators on the content side of this to follow different odds and seamlessly log into the books that you're actually using. Some of the unique benefits of this is again, centralized odds and news all in one place from here within the bet space. You can see what's happening in terms of trending bets and shareability. You'll be able to have the opportunity to bet in real time and more importantly, bet within the app. So again, some of the proprietary tech we're working on as well as the partnership with Odds Checker is allowing you to stay within the Locker Bet ecosystem and place those bets without having to leave the app. That's okay. a big USP for us in terms of that side of things. That, and again, that's huge. So, so from your app, you can see your PayPal, your Ladbrokes, your Bet365, your wallets and your bets in each one, rather than having to log in and forget password and go back and forth and then trying to figure out what where you place the bet. It's all just in one in one place. Okay. That's Very great. Easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So from a, from a user experience, that's essentially trying to paint a picture for that. Um, if anybody has any other uh, further interest in taking a look at what that looks like or what we're developing, we do have some videos that we can share or happy to arrange a, a personalized uh, a demonstration for it. And we can walk you through kind of the, the alpha of what we're building there. Great. Uh, sorry about my quick exit there. It was uh, internet problems. But anyway, um, when do you expect to be monetizing and what does that look like at scale, guys? Uh, we are planning on starting to monetize uh, with our marketplace uh, this summer. Um, and again, uh, just to reiterate, that's going to be uh, looking at trying to, we have three committed partners in the publisher and rights holders field. Uh, where we'll be able to integrate, unlock their content for those that are interested in purchasing it and starts uh, turning on the, the revenue streams from that perspective. Uh, at scale, uh, once we kind of map that out, combined with the growth that we're projecting here in Ireland, as well as the UK, and as we move into the States over the next couple of years, projecting around 5 million in revenue by the end of 2025, I think up to 20 million by 2027, focusing on those core markets that we showcased with you in the uh, presentation that Ross showed there. So and again, just to reiterate from a user's perspective, what that means for the user as well as the publisher. 
I think in that stage, you know, engineering is just down to numbers. So it's down yeah. to quality and down to numbers. You know, we've got a very talented team here. We've got our CTO based in the US. We've got our product design based in Ireland. We've got some of our front end and, and back end engineers based in Poland. So it's very taught from, from a cost perspective. Um, so increasing that, bringing in a lead engineer and increasing our front end, the back end capability is going to result in the app being able to actually crunch out some of the features that the users are requesting. And I would say that's that's one of the key that's one of the key key items for this year. I think as the app comes in to the back end of this year and early next year, you know, it's about bringing on the right strategic partners and strategic investors um, for it to go into a scaling structure, um, which is a, which is a total, you know, another another step or another another um, chapter in the book. I think from that perspective, it, this year is very much about um, developing out the vision we have, which I'm sure is probably clear to people from the deck that we've just gone through. Obviously, some expenditure, I would say, on marketing um, within Ireland and the UK as well, getting some more feedback on that. So, it's a, you know, this is a unique chance for us to bring in some some advocacy um, from users. Like we've, we've obviously gone out to our own user base and invited them to Spark. And you know, we've seen a lot of uh, sp brilliant sports companies go through Spark. So we thought this made a lot of sense to bring people on the journey with us uh, to allow them to take, take, take a piece of it and feedback in it. And obviously, you know, you bring on strategic, so you bring on, you know, some, some serious investors into it. There's obviously a huge upside there for them. So I think in that perspective, um, you know, the, the app you see today, we're very proud of, but I think the app you see by you know, going into Q3 or Q4 will um, be best in market. Excellent. Very good. I, I'm lost now as to what you've asked no, me with my No, you're fine. Um, we're, we're just gone over um, 35 minutes past. Uh, just a question. Um, will it include and will Mayo be going sure. on Sunday? Um, I tell you what, is, is, this our la is this our last one for you, or is there a couple more? Is there, uh... <laughs> I think this, is, yeah, this is probably our last one. We have a few there that we can we can answer offline. There's loads of questions after coming in. I, um, I will try and do a wrap around no longer than three minutes. Um, yes, Jake, this is included. You can follow any county hurling football, Kogi, LGFA. So it's uh, it's very interesting in that respect. Podcasting, yes, in version three, we're going to bring that in so you can actually listen to podcasts within the platform. Uh, we're talking to strategic partner, but we can enhance that in the future as well. If you're watching live sport and you've already got a subscription, you'll just be able to sign in and watch it. That's no problem. As Matt went through, it's not about us just taking one piece of revenue off. It's about understanding you more so we can monetize you over the longer term. Um, there were, I'm just flicking through some of the questions as I'm going as well, and I appreciate won't be able to get to them all. But on that point of, uh, you know, if you buy a subscription, um, you know, if someone, if a rights holder wants to sell you one half of a game, Locker enables them to do that. We don't set the pricing, so it's a dynamic platform that allows rights holders to, I would say, to sell as they want. Um, and also with Twitter, we, we're actually looking enough to have a, a partnership with their sports team. So we've been uh, we've been able to get early access and kind of avoid some of the hits and trills that um, other people might be experiencing and in going into Twitter sports right now. And uh, on the game, I I, geez, I, I don't want to I don't want to give a prediction. Someone might hang their hat on, so <laughs> I'll uh, I'll, do, I'll defer to a GA expert if they're on the call. Shout. Um, <laughs> And uh, John, John, no, Matt's not in a bar. It does look like a bar, but uh, it's a, uh, it's an empty one. Um, sadly, it might be the only empty bar in the Republic of Ireland. You know, so, um, yeah, and obviously maybe just the acquisition of new members is, um, you know, we've been organically growing, which is fantastic. Um, but I think you know, working with teams, leagues, and rights holders, which have huge audiences, the transfer is probably the most obvious one. So. Listen, I, I think that was the biggest catch-all answer I could yeah. give there for a good five minutes. Yeah, them. no, yeah, and I mean, so. there was a mention there as well. We, we spoke about it during the week about um, News Now, um, you know, as well about how it's kind of spammy and how it's maybe not the best platform. So this is version two on an app with everything else. So. Yeah, I actually saw News Now on a Ryan Air flight and we were thinking about setting up Locker and there was a guy reading Leeds United content and we were standing off to leave it. And the challenge with News Now is they have no control over publishers. So you can get content from anywhere. Whereas, you know, if you go into Locker, you can try it out. Just follow Leeds United, even if you're not a fan. We'll give you the default three that we think are best for you. Yeah. So as a Manchester United fan, for example, I get the People's Person, which is a very small publication related to United. And I get that, which is actually, I didn't read that before Locker. I wouldn't have been a consumer. And going back to Matt's point, that's actually giving me better content as a fan, but it's also giving that publisher 
consumption that they wouldn't have got. Um, so I think that that's news now uh, probably gave us, a, you know, if we were talking about a seed of an idea, maybe they contribute 20, 25% to it. But obviously when you use an area, you're generally not signed in. So again, there's no profile or data understanding what you want. And best example I could give it out for everyone is take my, you know, when he's consuming NFL content back home, yeah, he's using Bleach Report, ESPN, probably using American publications. But when you're consuming content, um, let's say in European football, you're going to Irish, British publications, but again, Locker's actually able to understand that difference. So when Matt goes for the Packers, it's it's knowing that he wants American publishers. When he's gone back over to European soccer, it knows that he wants European soccer and to actually quieten down the bleach reports in ESPN. Naturally, you know, they don't have the same covers that the BBC or the Atlantic or anything like that one. So it's a um, big differentiator is the understanding. And I'd like to think that the UX is uh, UX is a little bit of an uplift as well. Man. I want to show, totally trust on the ninjas now either. Very good. Okay, right, well, guys, we're, we're coming to the end of our time, really. Thanks very much indeed uh, for uh, for your contribution there. There's been a load more questions that we haven't had a chance to get through, although we've kind of, I think, gone through a good number of them. But anyway, so listen, we'll get those over to you, and hopefully you'll be able to answer those, and we can get them back online so people can actually see those uh, for them as well. But uh, listen, guys, thanks very much indeed. So we've we've heard from Ross and the team now, and I think you'll agree that uh, Lock is, a very, worth, is worth a very serious uh, consideration for investment. Uh, remember that it's EIS as well. So, uh, so if you're invest, if you're investing, uh, there's a, a, a you, you'll get forty percent rebate on on your tax for the for the investment that you put in. Um, and if you'd like to have a follow on call with uh, Ross or Matt or anyone else of the team, then please give us a give us a call. We'll arrange a one on one over Zoom or even face to face if necessary, and uh, we'd be very happy to facilitate that. So, uh, so that can be arranged. So I think that's it for today. So guys, thanks very much for your uh, for, for for the presentation and, and answering all of those questions. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be in touch soon. So guys, thanks very much indeed, and we'll yeah. see you soon. Thanks everybody. Nice to meet everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.